Kung Fu movie fans. I am so honored to have as my guest this evening, Sifu Robert Samuels of R4 Films, Hong Kong Stuntman Association, the only American disciple of Samo Hung, Kung Fu movie veteran and an all around great guy. Sifu Robert, how are you doing tonight? How are you? Thank you for having me. I really appreciate that. I'm excited to be here at Film Fan Dojo. Thank you. We're, we're excited to have you. So we got to talk about Shadow Fist 2. Yes. As a fan of, of old school Kung Fu, when I saw Shadow Fist 1, I was very excited. I think I watched Thank that you. about 10 times in a row. I appreciate and, that. And on your YouTube channel, when the film was released, it was a lot of positive responses, a lot of positive comments, a lot of positive yes. responses. Were you surprised by the overwhelming uh, positive response? I I was actually. Um, I mean, we were looking for things to do, and you know, I, 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 being a fan of Shaw Brothers, uh, the Golden Age of Hong Kong, you know, I wasn't a part of it, but I wanted to pay my respects because that's where it got me where I was. So I started talking with uh, my business partner, Robert Jefferson, uh, Reese Tanaka, and, you know, we were just kicking around. I said, you know what? We should do an homage to Shaw Brothers. And I said, well, if we're going to do one, it has to be uh, to my to my mentor, Lao Ka Leo, you know, uh, the famous action director for, for most of the Shaw films, you know. And I wanted to dedicate it to uh, my my other brother in Hong Kong, uh, Mark Halton. Um, he's the, uh, he, the heir apparent to um, Lao Ka Leong's uh, Kung Fu lineage. So that's to pay respect because he looked after me in Hong Kong as well. So, you know, we, but we, we didn't just want to present it in any kind of way. You know, we wanted to make our, here we have African-Americans that are attempting to do this. So it has to be presented in the right way. So with nostalgia, I wanted to make sure I kept the, the pure aspect to evoke the feelings of Kung Fu theater in the old Shaw brother days and sitting in the movie theaters on 42nd Street, New York and Philadelphia, you know, and just for, for a brief moment, take you back to those to that to that golden age for us Americans and how we appreciated the, the Shaw Brothers films on Saturday, Channel 5, New York, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Philadelphia, Channel 29, Black Belt Theater, Kung Fu Theater. So uh, that's what we did. And I just it was a loose, loose concept, but I didn't realize that. It was something that people really wanted to see. It really, it really made them feel good, and it brought back memories from when they were child, children. And that, that, that touched me a little bit. And so they kept saying they wanted more, more, more. That you know, the short way in which I presented it, they wanted more of that. So I started talking with my business partner. And I said, you know, why don't we, uh, why don't we go bigger and better this time? You know, and we came up. Robert Jefferson wrote another chapter to the to the to the shadow fist saga um and that's called shadow fist uh to the axe gang um and we decided to cast uh, willie debam johnson the world famous martial arts champion and his son uh who's a champion in his own right mark johnson um as the lead uh, we worked with him years ago in our film uh, chronicles of parker and it did well um so and he wanted to work with us again so he was looking for a screen comeback, and uh, I said, "Well, let's let's why don't we do this? You know, let's make it let's make it big. You know, so I get to fight him in the film. So yeah, oh, this is going to be awesome. Okay, and uh, I've seen some behind the scenes uh, photos and some footage, and it looks great. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, and can you tell us a little bit more about the cast of Shadow Fist Two? Yeah, yeah, we have. Um, uh, Anthony Scannish, um, he's an actor I worked with for many years. He also worked in Chronicles of Parker. Him and Marco hadn't worked together in uh, about five, five or six years. So, you know, with this particular film, you know, we had a, uh, a karate guy and I knew Anthony was very adept at martial arts, karate style and Muay Thai. So I said, you know, well, that'd be interesting to have him involved. So we casted him, he was happy to join and uh, he has a tremendous battle with Marco. You guys are gonna love that. Um, and then we had uh, uh, Alicia Green. She was uh, involved in the martial arts community, a traditional martial artist here in the city of Philadelphia, New Jersey. Um, she's won numerous championships around the world. And uh, 
she was looking for an opportunity to get into some films. And I said, you know, she had worked with us in the past on smaller, you know, behind the scenes, but her skill level presented itself to a point where this particular role I was looking for, she was actually suited for it. So we casted her as one of the co-stars as well. So, uh, and she does a tremendous job as well. So look forward to that. Her and Marco have a battle similar to myself and Andre Duza in uh, okay. uh, Shadow Fist One, very traditional. Okay. And on Shadow Fist One, you served as fight choreographer. Are you serving in that capacity yes. as well on Shadow Fist Two? Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's my myself and uh, the um, one of uh, the lead uh, member of the uh, action team, uh, Andre Duza. Uh, him and I uh, and Jefferson, we all coordinated together. And uh, once again, yeah, I'm going to handle all the action. Yeah. Oh, so yes, yeah, so it'll be great. Be, it will be great. It's it will be, be great. great. Speaking and of, and I that, wanted to make sure that we, I wanted to make sure we had three times as much more action as the as the first one. The first one was short. I think it was six minutes. This one will probably approach 25 to 30 minutes. Long. Okay. Okay. So yeah, it's a, it's a stronger uh, structure and uh, visually uh, we filmed it like a Kung Fu noir. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah, I'm so looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. when, speaking of fights, when you plan your fights, how much does yeah. your training and tutelage from under Sam Hong come into play? Oh, that comes into play a lot. You know, uh, my earlier, uh, what, what gave me the foundation was uh, a guy named Maurice Tunstall um, here in Philadelphia. He's the one who, who taught me uh, home guard for many, many years when I was growing up. Um, and he's the one who introduced me to Chu Chi Ling and got me to Hong Kong. So it started with the early foundation um, but then when that, it came to you know, like movie Kung Fu and things of that nature, you know, I, I, I was with uh, Sam Hong's stunt team. So living and learning with him every day was truly, uh, it was hard. It was very hard, but um, it, it helped me in how I structure things and, uh, and how I develop characters for film. You know, when Sam and I, you know, we were working together every time he knew I wanted to be a director. So he was training me to direct, be a director. You know, when we were filming uh, Momi Bay, uh, Don't Give a Damn, you know, we would set, he would set up certain shots and he'd say, Bobby, come over here, you know, look through the lens. You know, this is the reason why we have this particular format structure. So I knew how to capture things, how the Hong Kong action directors capture things. You know, I, I don't like a lot of wire work. I, I believe wire work should be used, you know, not just as a, as a gimmick, you know, it should be used to enhance, um, not to lean on it. Uh, because when you lean on it, it becomes a, for a formulaic structure and it just, it doesn't feel good. And uh, a lot of the camera movement, I liked, I didn't want to present it as how we shoot today. You know, the camera's always moving with the action in and out. I wanted to make sure that I kept it true to form on how Chang Jie would film back in, in the Golden Harvest days or the Shaw Brothers days, you know, the the filmic rules then so yeah I, I let the actors be uh the movement as opposed to you know the camera just helped okay and speak speaking of that i, I have this question uh about that because we we see a lot of fight scenes with the um very active cam and a lot of cuts mm -hmm. and, and a lot of big budget mm -hmm. hollywood movies that end up having fight scenes do you think it is it is possible to re-educate the greater audience to more of the wide angle, the actors are doing more of the moving and the camera's following them as opposed to like the camera's just all over the place. <laughs> do, you, do you think it's, it's possible over time, I think, of course? I think over time, I mean, yeah, I think that with the breadth of uh, digital technology, uh, that particular way of filmmaking is, is it's here to stay basically so it'll just be put alongside you know a lot of young people you know the how they digest visual images today is different than how we did from back in the day um it's a it's a millennial generation it's a millennial approach to filmmaking um it's dizzying at times but some of it is creative some of it is is very very good um, but I think that you, you still must always maintain your, your traditional sense of film because story is important and, and it doesn't matter how great the action is, how great the camera work is. If you don't have a, 
a properly structured story, then it's just a fight scene. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's that that when I do films, I, I like to make sure that the story value is there, that it's just not a bunch of empty moves or people just doing action just to be doing action with some cool camera work. I believe that characters are important. That's one thing that Tamil Samuel taught me. And, you know, to develop the action organically as opposed to, you know, a lot of people are, are they need storyboards and this and that, you know, in Hong Kong, we don't really kind of do all that, you know, in Hong Kong, we have a bunch of actors together and the action coordinator comes up with a visual concept. He takes his action team and they start working out the, the blueprint for it and we get it done, you know? Um, there wasn't pre back in the day, you know? There wasn't things of that nature. It was just, you know, get down grime and gritty and let's get it moving, you know? And uh, I think that's what's lacking today. A lot of people depend on the formulaic structure of, well, film school says do this and film school says do that, film, yeah, but that, I think that's what works with me and my 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 business uh, partners. They are traditionally trained, you know. They went to film school, NYU, graduated. Um, I didn't. I never went to film school. My education was actually on set, working with prolific directors. I worked with Yun Ping, James Foley, uh, the corruptor here. I mean, Alfred Chung, Kochi Sum, Samo, three or four times. I mean, so you know that's that to me that's more valuable knowledge because they're all academy award winners you know stanley mm -hmm. kwan you know um each one of them has a, a certain way in how they they design action how they design films and, and approach to filmmaking um you know one of the earliest uh tutelages that i got was um uh observing john Wu for three or four days editing a better tomorrow at film workshop um, that was that was so valuable for me, you know, because I got a chance to actually pick his brain, you know. This was before Hard Target and all his American fame, you know. This was John Woo, the 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 bullitic gun master, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and just speaking with him in an editing bay, and then you know, stepping next door with Choi Hart, you know, who just did Peking Opera Blues, and you know, mm. that's the that's the education that I had. So I think what works with with how I approach filmmaking is that. My my partners there they keep that and Reese Tanaka and, and Jefferson they keep that that traditional you know school way the structure and that kind of reels me in from my creative way you know it's a perfect yin and yang balance and that's how we're able to do what we do and 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 that takes me right into my next question you must have read my mind you and, and Robert Jefferson seem to have a great working chemistry. Can you explain, you know, briefly about your creative process? Yeah, so how it works with him and I, like we'll sit back and we'll kick around all these ideas, you know, we'll see what's out there right now. And, you know, we're not ones to like follow the crowd, you know, so 500 people are going that way to see something, we're going the other way. Because that's that's how our minds think, you know, we, we, we tend to think independent um, and not follow the crowd. So he'll come up with a, a concept, an idea, I'll, I'll I'll play around with it and see if it's if it's actually feasible for us to do how that fits in the structure of our our branding and, and, and how we like to move forward. One thing we do is we like to always feature uh, M opportunities. A lot of African Americans, Latinos, Asians, they don't really have the opportunities to be leads in films, you know. Um, but it's not to say that we don't do Caucasian people. I'm just saying we do all people, but we like to give an opportunity to people of color because they don't have the opportunities that most people do have. Um, so yeah, that's how we come up with, with, with the, he comes up with the ideas. I'll put it into a kind of structured format and, and a filmic approach as far as, you know, scheduling and how we want to do it and, and the characters and, and the cast members. Um, fortunately, you know, we, we, we like to work with Hector Sorio and Team One mm -hmm. Take and, you know, we have our, our favorite guys that we like to partner with our team members and things. And I think that's that's the beauty of, 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 of the independent film scene right now and the short film scene, because that that that's a medium that's being because there's platforms that support this content. Um, some of that content is powerful. That's our approach to how you do things. Good. And you know, can you tell us about Red Sash Theater? I love the idea of Red Sash Theater. Can you tell maybe some fans that maybe not be not familiar with it a little bit more about Red Sash Theater, its goals, 
and, mm -hmm. and what you guys hope to accomplish with Red Sash Theater. Yeah, growing up, I, you know, we all grew up on like Black Belt Theater, Kung Fu Theater, things of that nature. And like that really afforded us the, the opportunity to see these Kung Fu films every week. You know, we race home and, and then growing up, for me, that was it. I just loved Kung Fu movies. I wasn't into football, I wasn't into basketball, none of that. It was all martial arts, Bruce Lee, uh, Five Things of Death, Low Lay, things of that nature. So, you know, we just, I don't know, we, we like to approach things differently, you know, from, uh, tell me, tell me what the, what the, uh, what the leading question is, was again, I'm sorry. Just, uh, just tell uh, the fans about Red Sash Theater and some of its goals. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so the concept came up with uh, Jefferson. He said, you know, we should find a format to offer other filmmakers an opportunity so that their meet their programs could be seen. So we, we presented it as a black belt theater, just in a shorter form content. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked to a lot of the other filmmakers and, you know, all, a lot of their older content that, that was successful if they wanted to reissue it, you know, we would put it on our channel, you know, we have it, it's on Roku and reach hundreds of platforms and it gives old material, new life. It gives, you know, opportunity for you to go to the one place and see everybody's work, you know? So we, we partnered with our school dropouts, Deviant Children Production, Rising Tiger Films. Uh, it's it just a number of film groups we all kind of joined together and they all submit content for the channel. Um, once a month, uh, we also present original content uh, such as Shadow Fizz. Um, I think uh, the Leo Fong story was mm -hmm. last, uh, last month. Um, and then we have Shadow Fizz 2 coming so yeah, that's that's where it came. I talked to Demetrius Angelo, um, his urban action platform. You know, initially we were with Binge TV, mm -hmm. um, but talking with Demetrius, you know, we, we decided to kind of join forces. And now um, we, we've partnered with Urban Action Showcase. So we're actually uh, partners with uh, Urban Action Showcase in the uh, Red Sash uh, venture. So yeah, that it was created just as an opportunity to uh, have, a, have our own channel of martial arts films um, that are of quality, you know, uh, Jose Manuel, his films are on there as well, uh, Swashbuckler Studios. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's paying it forward to all the other filmmakers and also uh, creating a platform and giving people an opportunity to see the old Kung Fu school stuff again. Yes, and I'm, I'm a big fan of it. So I got it on my Roku Thank and you. I just watched it last night. So Thank big you, fan yes. Of it. Now, are there any plans to have maybe like full length interviews with old school stars like Lo Mang, Lu Feng, Chang Shan and others at some point on the channel? Yeah, we uh, we thought about doing a, um, a podcast and uh, a weekly uh, uh, martial arts talk, uh, Kung Fu film fan talk, you know. Um, I wanted to use maybe Rick Myers and I, because Rick Myers and I used to do uh, the old commentary for a lot of the uh, early the victim things like that, mm -hmm. the uh, fist kicks and the evil. About we have about twenty or thirty titles out that was under the Tai Singh brand, mm -hmm. um, and they were very successful. Um, so we were talking about attempting to do something like that again, you know. So I'd like to talk to my buddy Rick about maybe kind of joining me hosting something for the channel as well. Um, but again, things are, things are just opening up now. You know, people are vaccinated. The business is starting to pick back up and now the creative juices are, are going to start flowing again so sounds good so count me in when you guys do that and, yes uh, yes definitely. looking forward to it now you you you're still a very busy man can you tell us about we know about shadow fist 2 you got made in chinatown yes. available mm -hmm. on uh all the digital platforms mm -hmm. out right now going to be on dvd blu-ray really soon can you tell us about what other projects that you have in the works, if you can, the ones you can name? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm June. I'm doing a film called uh, playing a role, the villain in a film called Double Dragons. Um, uh, that's by Cesar Pizarro. That'll be uh, I'll be filming that July the 27th. Um, I'm scheduled for that. And then I'm doing a film with uh, Joey Min. Him and I return to the screen. Um, uh, being directed by uh, a guy named John Truy. He's a, a very award-winning uh, uh, director as well. Um, and we play Shaolin Monks. So that that will be Shaw Brother-esque as well. Right. Um, so look forward to that. Um, that's, uh, that's in two weeks I filmed that. 
Okay. Um, and then I have the uh, the big project coming up, uh, Jugando con Fuego, with uh, director Nicholas Ortiz. Um, he's he's a brilliant director. He's the uh, director of uh, that film Black Betty. Mm -hmm. um, at won multiple awards at the HBO uh, Urban Action Showcase. Um, so he approached me about a film, and like I really like the concept of it. It's Flashpoint meets Equalizer, you know. So that that's going to be a a, a kick-ass film, you know. It's uh, similar to Man on Fire, okay. that kind of a vibe, you know. So all three of us decided, you know, we 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 join join forces. This is going to be a long form short, so it'll be about 30, 35 minutes, forty okay. minutes long. Um, we're shooting down in uh, Tijuana, Mexico. Um, so yeah, it's going to be uh, gun gun battles, kung fu action. We have uh, Jose Manuel from the Man from Kathmandu. Okay. He's uh, he's flying in from Puerto Rico to play uh, one of the uh, lead roles. So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be really intense. Uh, Hector Sorio, finally, he's uh, he's playing the lead villain. He plays ah. a character called Tony. yeah, he plays a character called Tony Lobo, and that's pretty much based on uh, Samuel's character from Shao Lam. So yeah, okay. it's 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 yeah. pretty intense. It's pretty intense. So. And I play a CIA agent, so yeah, it's uh, it's called Jugando con Fuego. Um, we start principal photography in July. We'll be there for about a month shooting that. So yeah, right. Uh, what else we have? We have um, Shadow Fist Two. Um, we're, we're doing that now, and that'll be a lot longer than Shadow Fist One. That'll be close to a 30, 30 minute uh, short feature film. Short feature, excuse me. Um, and then uh, Mark Wiley and I are discussing. Uh, another show, a TV show that he wants to pitch and a, a second film called Dragon Letters to be shot uh, with uh, Lo Mang and uh, Lu Feng out oh, in uh, Taiwan. Oh, so uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's in the works as well. Oh yeah, got a lot, a lot, a lot going on right now. Well, and we're I'm, glad I'm, that I'm you very do. Fortunate. And I'm talking, I'm in talks with uh, Maurice Crump uh, oh. to do a couple of films with him in Thailand. Okay. Yeah. So stay tuned. All for that. right, Maurice Crump. Well, I mean, I, I, and I'm sure my fans, or my, not my fans, excuse me, I'm sure the viewers and listeners are gonna love it like I am going to. You got you, our four films, a lot of the aforementioned studios that you name are keeping the kung fu alive, the martial arts alive on the screen, digitally. You know, we can we can get them on different digital platforms and watch them. And I just want to thank you for that because it brings me back to my childhood when these movies were just everywhere. And I'm yeah. sure my fan, my fan I keep saying, I'm sure the people who are your fans like me are, yes. are really thankful for that as a fan. What did it feel like to take a kick from Sam Oof, That was, that, <laughs> That was brutal. That was brutal. Uh, we were in uh, "Don't Give a Damn," and um, there was one scene in the in the police station. We, him and I, had a, a battle downstairs um, in a small room. It was a gun battle at first. Then I pulled out a knife. I had the SWAT team uniform, and then we, we went to battle. And then we had to fly through a window together. So after we flew through that window together, right, bef the scene before that called for him to knock over a cage, grab me around my neck and then knee me in the side of my jaw. Well, phew. he kneed me so hard that he knocked my tooth out. And I mean, Ooh. pow. Um, I felt my tooth rattling around in my head. And so I, I, says, I, I said, my teeth, my tooth. He said, oh, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. He said, you okay? I said, okay, let me see. He, said, he looked at the tooth. He said, okay, put it in your pocket, put it in your pocket. Uh, get Bobby some water, get Bobby some water. I'm rinsing my mouth out and everything. He said, okay, all right, come on, let's go back to work. And then right back to work, you know, that's that's the Hong Kong way, you know. Um, but yeah, he is powerful. He has on a, for his size, he has amazing agility and amazing speed. And just I, you see why Bruce Lee used him in Enter the Dragon, you know. He, he's a very powerful man, you know, and, and again, he's a living legend, you know. I'm honored to have lived with him, I'm honored to have worked with him, I'm honored that everything that he's given me, you know. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for him, you know, him and my, uh, my other Kung Fu brother who, who's been with my career throughout. That's, uh, Colin Cho, nice thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, both of us, Samo students, same age, uh, worked together on many films. You know, I remember I was, um, 
I love, we were filming Don't Give a Damn. And he was, at that time, he was filming two films. He he would leave us and he would go and work with uh, Corey Yip. And he was filming Zhong Lam Hoi Obiu, which is um, Bodyguard from Beijing. Mm. So that's where he fought Jet, Jet Li. Um, so I'm standing on the side. I, I went with him to set that day and because uh, I wanted to meet Jet. And uh, it was at the scene where they, in the basement, he had the black coat mm. on and <laughs> covering his face and on with the gas and everything. But uh, I told him, I said, you know, man, if you ever come to America, if you ever learn to speak English really well, you know, you'll be a superstar. Uh, and look what happened. He ended up <laughs> learning English, coming to America, and he became a superstar, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my brother. That's my brother. Wow. Great stories. Great experiences. And yeah. we thank you for those experiences and you know, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, you are one of my inspirations to keep training martial arts, to um, keep pursuing some of the things I want to pursue, including this this type of interview thing. And uh, I have nothing but gratitude for you granting this interview. And before we oh, thank you, brother. you're welcome. Thank before you. Well, listen, I tell you, I, I, let me say this, be the first to say this, you know, when it comes to our four films, you know, our first point of contact is uh, we deal with two individuals and that's you and Justin Hughes. That's it. You know, film fan dojo gets all exclusives. Um, Justin Hughes and Asian movie pulse, they get all exclusives. Mm -hmm. You guys have been supporting us from the beginning um, and you, you, you don't quit on us. And like, I'm just so happy to be a part of, you know, film fan dojo as well as Asian movie pulse. So yes, thank you so much brothers. Thank you. And thank you for taking the time out of your super busy schedule to join us tonight. Fellow Kung yes. Fu movie fans, check out uh, Red Sash Theater on the Roku. Uh, mm -hmm. you, what's your Instagram? If they want to follow you on Instagram. Uh, yes. Yeah. You can follow me on Instagram. It's R underscore Samuels um, on Instagram. Uh, you can just uh, Robert Samuels on Facebook. Um, or you can just, you can send me an email, rjsamuels54 at gmail.com. I'm very accessible. Ain't none of that. You ain't got to go third, fourth parties, you know, just pick up the phone and call me. I think that, you know, you need to be, remain humble and treat people with respect, you know. Um, there's an audience out there that appreciates the work that you do, and you have to appreciate that audience. So respect always. Thank you. See for Robert Samuels for your time tonight. And we're going to be looking forward to seeing Shadowfish 2. Yes. Uh, what man is it? Wake, Wago, Cone. What's, what's the. Uh, uh, Ugando, Cone, Ugando. Fuego. Ugando right. Con Fuego, Play with fire. Playing yes. with Fire, and all the other projects that you got coming up. We're definitely going to check them out. I'm going to post about them. So Thank all you the so people much. that watch this are going to be kept up with the latest. That's happening yes. in the world of R4 films. And we again appreciate you. This is 12 Venom from Film Fan Dojo saying yes. peace. Peace. <laughs>